then I decided to do this because girls like me are around the world and my religion and my everything and they shine to tell the truth but when they see me they will gonna tell the truth one day so there are so many guys who just make relationship fake relationship and make you in love then one of the night he, he, I was with him like our relationship was three months and then he came to my home one of the night and then he put my juice some drug and after that he raped me he spiked some, uh, a juice yeah he, he put some drugs on juice and then after he raped me he he, he cut us he told me I'm not sure but he put the in video and then after a couple days he called me and he told me like I have a video on you if you don't do whatever I said to you to do I will show everybody and then I feel shy and ashamed and I beg him not to do that and then after that I was with him by force and anytime he came around the cities he called me and say like you have to come to me like two minutes, three minutes and he he did a lot of blackmailing and trading me everything. And then uh, I did after that then he called me and told me like if you don't do anything I will gonna send you pictures everything and everybody. Sometimes he bring his friends with him to my home and asking me to do everything they wanted. I refused one night and then after that night he came the small shop I own in 24 mall in Minneapolis, Minnesota and then he give to everybody my pictures and when the people like the people guys they call him and ask him like send us that picture and he asked them if you have five dollars I will gonna do for you that then he start to sell the pictures on my naked body. People, actually as I told you, Somali people, they don't support women that much. They support you guys because they think like if the girl do one mistake, they can do other mistakes. So they believe like if one guy said like that girl is bad, all of them they say she's bad. So that's what they culture. They don't even marry that woman for the future time. For the sake of this guy tell, lying to to this so that's what happened so after he forced you and you complied to do what he requested he ended up putting everything on the internet anyways yeah that's what happened and because you were ashamed Not only the internet even his cell phone he was selling the pictures sending the others and how did you find out that it was out there because he was selling in front of my store and in front of the mall for the public he was not scaring anybody even I called the police and asked them to come and then when they come they asked him a couple questions and say stay away from her and they told me stay away from him and they left and after that I called them back and I said he's sending my pictures my private parts for everybody what you guys can do about that he told me that's big criminal just contact to the court that we don't know nothing what they did the, what did the police say they said there's big criminal so we can't do nothing right now go to the uh, restraining order and uh, just do the something else I don't know they didn't do anything that much so then you ended up drinking bleach and killing myself suicide myself and was that because of the shame? And because of the shame and uh, you know our community they believe like I'm bad person this guy is nice married man and he like I'm the one who is losing the dignity and everything I don't go anywhere I just stay home for the sake of that thing Has now that you're coming out public do you think you're gonna hear from him or do you feel threatened that no, now actually I decided I'm not scared of anything right now. I'm ready to tell everything to the world. 
And do you think that there's other people they're using other women yes, and girls? Yes, he have a lot of naked girls in his home. He does? Yes, he do. A lot. Are they minors? A lot of girls, I have no idea why don't they talk, but they look like teenagers, like 17, 16, and 18. they all younger than me. Now, um, do you think any of these people are possibly used for... For having sex with other girls? Yes. yes. They have the pictures, then if, if you don't do what they want it, they will gonna show the people your pictures. So it's good for you to make it private and do for him everything he wanted. That's what they have the pictures. That's their main point. Now, how, how are how are you being treated now? Now that people the pictures are out there, differently, and they call me, keep calling me and call me name is all Somali people. I can't say all Somali people or bad peoples. They call me and just saying me or calling me bad names they call me like you deserve it to die you know or to leave the world because you don't deserve to live here that's what they're saying and why are they saying that because, because of what you are a prostitute you did that you did this you did this you know and uh, everybody likes me to die can you explain a little of the woman's culture in Somali? In Somali? Actually, in, uh, the main important is Somali people believe women's dignity is not to have a sex without, before marriage. And if she did, and the guy tell everybody, she can get married again. That's what they believe. And some guys, they do like, they want you, if you say no, they do like they tell everybody that they had sex with you, blah 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 blah, something like that, and then nobody marry you because of what they said. So, actually, the girls, most of them, they have this abuse, but they don't help. They don't show up. I don't know why. I like and uh, to say this: if the Somali girl is like. They are the most important women in the world. I know all Somali women are smart and they like to be something. But there is something holding them back because if they do what they want it, they will get a lot of a shameful stuff. So, technically it's abuse thing. Part of abuse, that's what I believe. He's telling my, my name my store number, my address, and even my, my phone number for everybody. And he have a conference room in Baltok, you know Baltak? The Baltok conference room the people meet. Where is that? Over the phone. Oh! He, ha he own one of the rooms, conference rooms, and he tells like... Everybody like. I've never heard of that. That's the first time I've heard of that. Yes, you go to the phone and uh, it's kind of 218 number. And then when you go there, you're going to hit like number. And there is a lot of Somali people. You guys uh, introduce each other and talking all day. Some people, they stay there all of 24 hours. Then, wow. Uh, he tell everybody like, she's this, she's this, she's this. And uh, I feel ashamed and he gives my phone number to people who even don't know me and they never met me. Yes, I would have no, uh, actually I, I was very angerful. So I did that for angrily, not for madly or something happened to my mind. It was like kind of something. I, I was get very, very mad at him and I was very ashamed. Uh, and embarrassing for this thing having it. That's why I drank the bleach. And thank goodness you're still with us <laughs> so you. that you can stand up and speak up for these women yes. to stop this.